Did you know that these five major inventions that we use every day were all invented by Germans? Let me tell you a secret. Even in Germany, most people don't know about this. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. My home country, Germany, is generally known for a few different things. You may think of beer, Oktoberfest, soccer, classical music by Beethoven, genius literature by Goethe, and of course, German engineering. The label Made in Germany is usually associated with high quality and durability. And Germany ranks among the top five nations for patent applications. And that's kind of been an ongoing theme throughout history. The list of German inventions is long. Some of those are pretty well known, like that Johannes Gutenberg was the one who invented the printing press in the 15th century. Others, however, not so much. But we're about to change that because in this video, I'm gonna tell you about five major inventions you didn't know were German. The first name on my list will immediately ring a bell for those of you who speak German because his invention is actually named after him in German. Röntgenstrahlung. In English, however, it's just called X-ray. Yep, when you break a bone and need to have one of those beautiful photos of the inside of your body taken, that's all due to Wilhelm Röntgen from the German town Lennep in what today is the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. At the time, this was part of the Kingdom of Prussia. Röntgen was a physics professor at the University of Strasbourg, Gießen, Würzburg, that's where he made a discovery and later the University of Munich. What's funny about this whole story is that Röntgen was actually running experiments for something completely different and only discovered x-rays on accident. It was on a Friday afternoon in the year 1895 when he noticed the unknown rays going through a light tight black cardboard and projecting onto nearby objects. He kept experimenting with the rays for the next few weeks and quickly realized that they passed through most substances, including human tissue, but left a shadow of solid objects, such as bones. Even though he wasn't the first scientist that encountered x-rays, he was the first one that saw their potential and kept exploring their use for medicine. By the way, the X in the name x-rays was just what he used as a placeholder for the name of the new race. But what are we gonna call them? I'm not sure yet. Eh, I'll just put an X for now. But in English, that name stuck. Only a few weeks later, he published his first paper about the new discovery called Über eine neue Art von Strahlen, on a new kind of race, which included an x-ray picture of his wife's hand. The news about the invention spread super fast and within just a year, doctors in Europe and the US were already using x-rays to make medical diagnosis. And in 1901, Röntgen even won the Nobel Prize in physics for his achievements. Next up on my list is an invention that each and every one of you has used before and many of us use it on a daily basis. Here's a hint for you. Yes, it's MP3, the file format that made it possible to compress audio to a point that the file size was small enough to fit more than 20 songs onto one device and make the distribution of audio faster and easier than ever before. Digital scientists had been researching this for decades, but the final step came from the German Fraunhofer Institute under the lead of Karl-Heinz Brandenburg, who today is often referred to as the father of MP3. The name of the group that worked on this project was Moving Picture Experts Group, short M-P-E-G. So MPEG, which also refers to the compressed video standard they developed. MP3 was technically just the audio part of that. In the mid 1990s, when the Fraunhofer Institute released the first MP3 encoder software and MP3 player software, the file format began to catch on rapidly. For the first time, people were now able to store multiple music albums on their computers that usually only had around 500 megabytes to one gigabyte of storage at the time. From there on, as we all know, MP3 completely revolutionized the music and media industry in the entire world and it all goes back to good old Germany. And if MP3 had never been invented, we definitely wouldn't be able to do this today. 
And of course, this wouldn't work without my wireless Raycon earbuds either. I use these on so many different occasions, whether it's while I do things in the house, go on a walk, when I travel, or even in bed to fall asleep. I always listen to one of my podcasts and the Everyday Earbuds by Raycon just make that really easy for me. They don't fall out of my ears no matter what I do or how much I move around and they sit flush with my face so that I can even lay on that side of my face and it's so comfortable. I can walk up to 10 meters away from my phone and they still work great and they have the perfect price point because they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. You can get a pair of the Everyday Earbuds, which are the ones I have, but if you're more looking for low latency gaming headphones, for example, or a Bluetooth speaker, Raycon has a huge selection and to make sure that you feel comfortable about your purchase, they even offer an easy and free return policy. But believe me, you won't need that. Some of my favorite features of the Everyday Earbuds are the different sizes gel tips. This is the main reason that these even work for me because I have tiny ears and your standard one size fits all headphones just don't stay in my ears. But I also love that they're water resistant, that the battery lasts forever and that I can control everything with the buttons on the side so I don't need to take my phone out every time I want to change the volume or hit pause. And they even have an awareness mode which makes me feel a lot safer when I'm out on walks because it allows me to hear my surroundings better. So I can only recommend them and Raycon even provided a 15% discount for all of my viewers. All you have to do is click the link in the info box below or go to buyraycon.com slash Philly from Germany and you'll get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Okay, this next one is probably not that unknown, but I found that there are enough people who don't know this. And since it's such a major invention that especially Americans, heavily depend on in their everyday lives, I felt like it needed to be on this list. The car. Because no, it was not invented by Henry Ford, which is a common myth here in the US. Technically, it was a lot of different people who contributed to the invention of the car, but Germans definitely played a pretty major role in this, particularly Karl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler. Even though they had never met each other, they both simultaneously built their first model of a modern automobile with a combustion engine in the late 19th century. And they were only about 100 kilometers apart from each other. Karl Benz was in Mannheim, Gottlieb Daimler was in Stuttgart. Benz was working on his three-wheeled Motorwagen, Daimler developed his four-wheeled motor coach, Motorkutsche, together with his business partner Wilhelm Maybach. Also a famous name, of course. Daimler and Maybach were using an advanced version of the oil-powered engine by Nikolaus Otto, another famous German inventor and to this day, the namesake of the Otto Motor, which is what we still call the modern gasoline engine in German. By the way, not only the gasoline engine was invented by a German, the diesel engine was too, by a German engineer called Rudolf Diesel. But back to the story. So both Daimler and Benz finished their models in 1886, but Benz was the one who who first received a patent and is therefore generally acknowledged as the inventor of the modern day automobile. In July of 1886, he went public with it and started selling it commercially. It was officially called the Benz Patent Motorwagen, Benz Patent Motor Car. A couple years later, his wife Bertha took a Benz Model 3 car on a road trip from Mannheim to Pforzheim and back, which was a distance of about 120 miles, which brought a lot of publicity and showed that the car was even fitted for long distance journeys. By 1900, Benz and company was the world's leading car manufacturer. And as you guys know, the Benz company later actually merged with Daimler and they still produce some of the most popular cars in the world to this day now under the name Mercedes, or in English also often pronounced Mercedes. Okay, let's be honest. Is there anything better than coming home from a long work day and getting an ice cold soda from your fridge? Okay, I have to admit that I personally actually don't do that because I work from home and I don't really drink soda, but I know that many of you guys do. And I know how much you would miss your fridge if it had never been invented. Well, thanks to the German scientist and engineer Karl von Linde, we don't have to live in a world like that. Of course, there were tons of scientists and engineers from all around the world before him that were constantly improving the way that we could keep our food cold. The ultimate goal was not having to rely on natural ice anymore. And one major milestone in the development of refrigerators was when Karl von Linde discovered his new method of liquefying gas called the Linde Verfahren, the Linde process that he patented in 1876. This really brought the compressor refrigerators from the 
the time to the next level. His method of using ammonia as a coolant made the fridges more reliable, which meant that they could be used in industrial processes year round, and they were even portable. Of course, since ammonia turned out to be toxic, it was eventually replaced with other chemicals in the 1920s. But at the time, Linda's fridges were a huge commercial success and laid the foundation for the fridges that we have in our kitchens today. By the way, Karl von Linde was from my home state, Bavaria, from a town called Berndorf, and he was even an engineering professor at the Technical University of Munich, my hometown. And one of his students was Rudolf Diesel, who again invented the diesel engine. And invention number five on my list is something that we all have in our closet. It can be skinny, baggy, high-waisted, low-waisted, ripped. Fact is, it never goes out of fashion. Of course, I'm talking about the blue jeans, invented in the mid-19th century by a man called Levi Strauss. I'm assuming most of you are familiar with his name and his brand, Levi's, that still exists to this day, but did you also know that he was German? His birth name was Löb Strauss, and he was born in Buttenheim, which is close to Bamberg also in Bavaria. When he was 18, he and his family emigrated to New York, where two of his older brothers were running a dry goods business. After he had been working for his brothers for a while, he moved to Louisville, Kentucky, obtained American citizenship, and officially changed his name to Levi Strauss. And then he followed the California gold rush and moved to San Francisco in 1853 to extend the family business there. By the year 1870, the business had turned into a successful four story department store, and one of his customers was a Latvian tailor by the name of Jacob Davis. According to the story on the Levi's website, Jacob Davis had been asked by the wife of a local worker if he could make pants for her husband that wouldn't fall apart. So he came up with the idea to put copper rivets at certain points of strain, such as pocket corners for example, to make the pants more durable. And voila, the pants turned out to be a huge hit, which is why Davis wanted to patent them, but he didn't have enough money for that. So he turned to Levi Strauss, who he had bought the fabric from, and asked if he wanted to become his business partner. Strauss agreed, and after experimenting with different fabrics, they found denim to be the best fit for their pants. In 1873, they created their blue jeans prototype, the Levi's 501, which at the time was referred to as waist overalls instead of jeans, and had two pockets in the front and only one pocket in the back on the right side. Denim had been around for a few decades at this point. It was a popular material for workwear clothing in factories, mines, fields, and forests, and it was already being dyed blue with indigo, but the rivets and pockets is really what made the pants a timeless staple. That same year, 1873, Strauss and Davis received their patent for improvement in fastening pocket openings, which is why that year is generally considered the birthday of the blue jeans. What do you think? What other major German inventions deserve more attention? Let me know in the comments. I do have quite a few more on my list, so I think this is calling for a part two. One invention that isn't actually German is the light bulb, by the way. I honestly didn't know this before either, but apparently a lot of people believe that the German scientist Heinrich Goebel actually invented the light bulb way before Thomas Edison ever did, but just didn't register it. But I found a whole study that proves that that's not true and was probably just made up by him to make money. So the light bulb does not belong on the list of German inventions and was in fact invented by Thomas Edison. Just wanted to share that so we can all sleep at night. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, activate the bell, and of course, follow me on social media. I'm actually in Germany when this video comes out, celebrating Carnival. So check out my Instagram stories and TikToks to see what that looks like exactly. If you like what I do on my channel, you can support me via the Super Thanks button, by joining my Patreon community, or by buying me a drink on Kofi.com. Thank you guys so much for your support. And with that, I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss.